So I would like to talk about sleep and suggestions for better sleep. So this is a publication from the Institute for Functional Medicine. And uh, when we think about sleep and impact on our health, longevity, our immune health, uh, we need to think about uh, avoiding different uh, stimulants, uh, certainly minimizing, uh, avoiding alcohol within a few hours of bedtime, uh, avoiding caffeine containing beverages, really probably after noon or two. Uh, the half-life is about six hours. So say you have a cup of coffee at noon, um, half of that is still going to be in your system at 6 p.m. So really think about that. And some of us are faster and slower metabolizers of caffeine. Uh, thinking about different decongestants you might be taking uh, and any other stimulant medications could be an issue. You know, the other thing that I think about is um, exercise. So uh, I think mild exercise is very reasonable before you go to uh, bed or, or later in the evening, but I wouldn't do real significant strenuous exercise. So the other thing to think about is uh, tension and anxiety in the evening. So anxiety provoking uh, activities, I think about like email, news, you know, and unfortunately a lot of people like to watch the news before they go to bed. And that's probably really uh, a terrible idea, really. Um, thinking about uh, reading things that aren't like overly uh, mentally stimulating, you know, don't pay bills. Try to avoid uh, arguments, um, just uh, different things that you can think about in terms of stressors. So, and if you have trouble uh, waking up at night and thinking about things, maybe consider a journal that uh, or a notebook that you can put by your bedside table, and that will help. So you can write some things down. You won't forget them in the morning, and uh, and then hopefully you can kind of get back to sleep or better prepare to sleep. Certainly doing some uh, meditation, uh, breathing exercises, uh, like four, seven, eight, uh, inhale for four, hold for seven, exhale for eight. That can be really helpful. Yoga in the evening can be helpful. Uh, so maybe music for some people, some tea, uh, kind of a wind down time is really good. When you think about sleep planning and preparation, you know, really shoot, you know, our goal is uh, seven to eight hours of sleep at night at a minimum if we can. And uh, so we really got a plan for that in our day. Uh, we can't uh, stay up too late, especially if we've got to get up early and really thinking about our sleep wake times. It's really helpful if we try to go to sleep around the same time each night as well as going to uh, wake up around the same time each morning. So including weekends. So think about um, getting to bed uh, earlier in the evening. Uh, definitely if we're getting to bed after 11 o'clock at night, that's going to imp impact our sleep quality. Uh, try to eat a few hours before bedtime. Uh, limit, you know, lots of uh, beverages in the evening. You can try uh, bath. That can be really helpful with Epsom salts, with magnesium. That will be really helpful and relaxing for your muscles. If you're having trouble staying asleep, um, you know, I would say if you really can't fall back asleep, um, get out of bed, uh, maybe meditate, read. Don't start paying bills, doing things to really engage your mind. Um, really try to limit tablet, iPhone, iPad. Uh, use at night because of that blue light. So if there's a nighttime setting, that is okay. Uh, be really careful about lights that you use at night. Uh, if I'm reading in bed, I'll use a red light on my headlamp and that can be really helpful. And then again, that uh, suggestion I had for a journal can be really helpful or a notebook to write things down. So when we think about light, noise, and temperature at night, you know, we want lights off, uh, for those of us that live in northern climates, especially those of us here in like Alaska or in uh, the northern European uh, countries, uh, 
we need blackout shades and sometimes we need eye masks to help, you know, uh, get rid of night lights. Those often can be a hindrance uh, to our sleep. Uh, make sure that if, uh, you, if you have any noise around, maybe it's just a gentle noise or a fan, but try to limit irritating noises. Um, don't sleep by your Wi-Fi. And if actually, if you can turn your Wi-Fi off at night, that can be super helpful. Um, and just think about uh, cool temperature in your bedroom. I think that's really, really important. Um, when we think about bedding and pillows, um, hyper hypoallergenic pillows will be really helpful. Same thing with mattress covers. Um, you know, you can try different pillows uh, that can be helpful. Um, body pillows can be helpful and uh, just having a good bed and linens is really quite helpful. In terms of supplements and light therapy, um, melatonin can be really helpful for people. Uh, one to five milligrams to fall asleep, five to 20 milligrams time release melatonin to stay asleep. 5-HTP can be helpful, uh, 100 to 200 milligrams an hour before bedtime. Taurine, 500 to 2,000 milligrams before bedtime. Magnesium, 200 to 400 milligrams, typical dose. Um, can certainly use things like ashwagandha and phosphatidylserine. Uh, I would really, you know, suggest that you talk with your uh, healthcare provider about each of these things. Uh, Lots of herbal teas out there that can be helpful with passion flower, valerian root, chamomile, uh, and you know, really limit your light at night, especially blue lights. And then the other thing that can be really helpful is to uh, get up early and get some daylight. And if you don't have daylight because it's winter time in northern Minnesota or Wisconsin or Alaska, um, get one of those 10,000 Lux bright lights and I think you'll find that really helpful.